are you, babe? Say, how about... Ouch! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. You all remember Metro Golden Mayor's famous Maisie pictures. Now, in just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Ann Southern. But first, your announcer. Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said. Maisie Revere. Of course, that's just the name I use in show business. And for me, lately, show business has been slow business. My real name is Mary Anastasia O'Connor, after my mother's favorite sister. The nice part of Brooklyn, mind you. In my neighborhood, we all had garbage cans. <laughs> the only reason me and my black suitcase ever left Brooklyn was... Well, gold is where you find it, like a fellow with smart brains once said. And that's how I happen to be in this little one-horse town of Stenderville today. You see, last night I answered an ad in Variety and got a job as a hostess in a local dance palace. The only reason I took the job was because of sentimental reasons. I love to eat. I had to dance with it, that upholstered foxhole. But the very next morning, me and my suitcase were walking down Main Street heading for the bus station. It was a long walk. My suitcase was heavy to lug and my feet hurt. I'd been on them all last night and so were those fellas I'd been dancing with. Hiya, beautiful. Can I give you a lift someplace? You're wasting your drool, stranger. I'm only going as far as the bus station. Bus station? What's the matter, baby? Don't you like our town? What's the like? You know you won't change your mind about a lift, gorgeous, huh? Yeah, mister, I'm sure. And if you don't stop driving alongside me, I'll forget I'm a lady and slap you right in the foot. Long walk to the bus station, baby. Well, don't you worry any of your two heads about it, monster. I'll make it all right. I've got good legs. I'll say you have, sister. I'll say you have. Oh. I'll say you have. Oh. Oh, I kind of thought that'd get you. Come on, hop in, beautiful. Well, I... I really should say no. Look, baby, if you get in, I promise to take you right to the bus station. Well, this suitcase of mine is rather heavy. Too heavy for a doll like you to be toting around. Come on, drop the bag in the back seat, gorgeous, and uh, you squeeze in up front here with me. Huh? Well, you promise to take me right to the bus station. Oh, sure, baby, sure. I know a swell way to get there. A swell way? Uh-huh. Yeah, well, of course, the, the route is a little longer. Mm-hmm, but it's more picturesque. Huh? Through the woods where it's nice and quiet. And you can yell at the top of your lungs, but nobody can hear you. You guessed it, baby. Well, so long, Boy Scout. Give my regards to the other members of the Wolf Patrol. Oh, come on. Now, be a nice kid. I'm an okay guy. Ask anybody in Centerville about Jeff Brady. They'll tell you. Hmm. You just ain't going to be happy unless I let you give me a lift, huh? Nope. <laughs> come on, get it. Okay. <clears throat> But if it's okay with you, Mr. Brady, I'd like to keep my suitcase in the front seat with me. Oh, sure, baby. Sure. Anything you say. <laughs> what do you got there in that suitcase? Diamonds and pearls? <laughs> oh, no. Just my equipment. Equipment? Yeah. I'm a professional knife thrower. <laughs> <laughs> nice thinking, Maisie. That one hasn't missed yet. <laughs> Here's your ticket, Effie. Oh. Don't lose it now. Your bus leaves at 11.03. Oh, Gosh. You know, Hector, I never really thought I'd ever get up the courage to leave Centerville. Well, Effie, you can't say as you rushed into it. Uh, uh, pardon me, Kirk, but I'd like to get a bus ticket. Well, you came to the right place for it. Like I was saying, I hope you pack some real sensible clothes, Effie. I hear tell it sometimes get sort of nippy. No. Yeah, you might even expect snow. Sonny, if you're through with the frost warnings, I'd like to buy a ticket. Oh, I'm terribly sorry to be detaining you, miss. 
Have to go ahead and wait on the young lady. I'll just sit here on my suitcase till my bus comes in. Okay. Well, Miss Fancy Pansy, where to? Four dollars and twelve cents. Huh? That's all I got. How far away from here can it take me? Hmm. Got any particular direction in mind? Nope. One place is as good as another when you're looking for a job. Oh. Pardon me, miss, but mm. I just couldn't help overhearing what you said about a job. Oh. I just left mine. I'm sure it isn't sure yet. Oh, well, say that. Whatever it is, I'm sure I can handle it. Well, the work I did for Mr. Burton, he's my boss. I mean, my ex-boss. The work isn't very exciting. Oh, well, don't let these spit curls fool you, honey. All I want is a job that won't break me of a habit I've had for years. Eaten. Gee, if you could help me, I'd be terribly grateful, Miss, um, Miss Effie Bass. Oh. And this here is Hector Slurpfogel. Slurpfogel? Uh, folks around here always call me just uh, Hector. <laughs> You're lucky. I'm Maisie Revere after my mother saved a sister. Oh. Well, I'm very glad to meet you, Maisie. Indeed, oh. <laughs> well, likewise, I'm sure. Now, Effie, um, exactly what kind of work is it? Well, there really isn't too much to it. I opened the office in the morning and closed up tonight. Oh, well, I won't have any trouble there. I'm very handy with the key, you know. Effie also swept up and brought J.B. his lunch and dinner. Lunch and dinner? We worked late uh, the night. Oh. Only Monday night, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Oh, Sort of a part-time job, huh? Well, after all, Mr. Burton deserves something for his money. That's right. He paid her $15 a week. Oh. Well, for that kind of loot, a girl can't expect to just sit around and alone. Well, I'm in no condition to bicker, Effie. How do I find this Mr. Burton's slave labor camp? Oh, oh, before I take you over and recommend you, Maisie, mm -hmm. I think you should know that there's a little more to the job. You see, Mr. Burton really hired me as an income tax expert. <clears throat> Hector. Yep. Four dollars and twelve cents worth of tickets, please. You don't know nothing about income tax, huh? Never needed to. I never had an income. Now, how's about that bus ticket, Heck? Well, let's see. Uh, you can get to Melville for three eighty. Say, Hector. Isn't this the time of year they put extra help on at the cannery? Yeah, and this is their big season. Ever work at a fish cannery, Maisie? Uh-uh. Any experience required? I don't think so. Well, the fish are willing to take a chance, I am. One ticket to Millvale, Hector. There you are, Maisie. The buses are just outside in front. Yep. Here's your 380, Hector. I can use what I got left for a gas mask. Uh, well, that must be my bus. Goodbye, Hector. Bye. Goodbye, Effie, mm. and thanks for trying to get me your old job. Oh, it was really nothing, Maisie. Anybody would have done this. Oh, don't you believe it, honey. Folks like you and Hector are the only chance the world has to keep from falling apart at the scene. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Goodbye, Hector. Goodbye, Effie, and thanks again. Oh, Maisie. Why, you're crying. Well, I can't help it. I'm not used to people being nice to me. Bye now. Wait for me, driver. Wait for me. Yeah, okay, miss, but hurry, will you? I'm late already. <sighs> well, honey. Goody, goody gumdrop. Now, please be seated, will you, miss, and we will be on our merry way into the pale blue yonder. <laughs> okay, driver, I'm seated. You may start now. Uh, aye, aye, Captain. Oh, oh, maybe. Maybe you forgot your suitcase. Oh, so I did. Robbie, you'll have to let me off for a moment. Well, all right, okay, but don't take any longer, Princess. I'm two and a half minutes behind schedule already. Oh, well, I'll be right back. Yeah, please hurry. Life is so empty without you beside me. <clears throat> oh, there you are, Maisie. Oh, gosh, it would have been terrible if you went off without your suitcase. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> although there ain't enough clothes in there to feed a dieting moth. But this suitcase has been sort of a buddy of mine. It's traveled with me all the way from New York to Hollywood. Well... Goodbye, Ed. Maisie. Uh-huh. Did you say you've been to Hollywood? Oh, that's where I'm going. You are? Well, what do you know? Going to Hollywood, huh? Hey, miss, for goodness sake, you know, the bus, the drive, peep-peep, remember? Oh, all right. You don't have to be such a screaming one. Well, bye again, Effie. I hope you have a nice visit in Hollywood. Oh, I'm going to live there, Maisie. And, and work in the movie studios. I'm going to write songs for all the big singing stars. Hmm. You a songwriter? Well, I never would have guessed it. But you never can tell, I always say. <laughs> of course, I only write the words. 
The words are the most important part. I always say. You know what I always say? I always say, them that don't want to ride in my shiny new bus, they don't have to. So there. <laughs> I think the driver's getting a little impatient, Macy. Here. I'd like to have you have this. What is it, Effie? A copy of one of my song lyrics. I want you to have it as a souvenir. Oh. You see, I'd be flattered to have it, Effie. Thanks. And goodbye again. Someday I'll tell my grandchildren that once I met Effie Baskin, the famous songwriter. Oh. <laughs> well, goodbye, Maisie, and have a nice trip. Yeah. Goodbye, driver. Now, you drive carefully. Oh, yes, oh, I will, lady. And just to make absolutely certain that your friend gets there safely, I will only drive in the safety zone. <laughs> Oh, Diver. Yeah? You wouldn't happen to have a penny postcard on you, would you? Well, uh, uh, no, no, miss. It just happens that I'm fresh out. Oh, too bad. I thought maybe when we got to the next stop, I'd drop Effie a postcard. Uh, Effie? Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean your gopher-faced friend back there at Centerville? Oh, that's not fair. Effie may not be pretty on the outside, but she has a soul. She's beautiful on the inside. Well, I wouldn't know. I got bad eyes. I can't see very deep. Oh. Uh, well, I mean, she thinks beautiful things. And I'll bet she writes beautiful things, too. Driver, uh, do you like to listen to song poems? Well, no. But I got a sneaking suspicion I'm going to. <laughs> well, let me read you one of Effie's masterpieces. Um, I wish I were in Peoria, where I could see much more of you. <laughs> oh, promise me you'll say I do, and I'll be there on the next two shoes. <laughs> I'll be more than your maid, I'll be your buddy when we are married by Parson McGillicuddy. Little Effie wrote that? It wasn't Nick Kenny. Say, ain't that just a little bit corny? Well, it's worse than corny. It's succotashy. Mm. Well, I guess maybe junk like that is considered pretty groovy in Centerville, though. Mm. That's the trouble. Effie's going to try and sell it in Hollywood. In Hollywood? Oh, no, she is kidding. Hey, look, lady, if that's a sample of her talent... She had better start practicing how to starve to death. Hmm. A good, wonderful person like Effie. There's no telling what'll happen to her in a hard, cold place like Hollywood. Driver. Yeah, miss? Turn back. Well, anything to make you happy. <clears throat> Turn back? Yes, and if you drive real fast, we can get back to Sandoval in time for me to try to talk her out of going to Hollywood. But, no, miss, I would like to help. I've got a bus full of passengers. Oh, look, I ain't been late once in 12 years. Driver. Would you go out of your way to avoid killing a chipmunk? Yeah, sure I would. Well, ain't people as important as chipmunks? Uh, look, miss, I don't even know this Effie Yeah, character. I know. Yeah, I know. After all, what's this total stranger like Effie Baskin to us? We'll probably never see her again anyway. No, it's not that, miss. Sure, I'm... sure. Let her go to Hollywood with her corny song. What's it to us if she wanders around, homeless, broke, without friends? It ain't no skin off our backs if someday we pick up a newspaper and read where another would-be songwriter threw herself in the river. Hey, we're turning around. We're going back. What's right, the idea? Exactly. What is the oh, idea God. of this? Don't bother me, madam. I'm saving a woman from drowning. <laughs> The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. Once again, here's Maisie. Hector. Oh, Hector. Oh, it's you, Maisie. What in carnation are you doing here? Well, I'm not trying to explain, Hector. Is Effie left yet? No. Oh, then it's not too late. 
2863 gave me 10 minutes to talk to her. 2863? Yeah, that's the bus driver's number. He didn't tell me his name. Where's Effie? In my office, typing out another song poem called Let's Have a Bowl of Chili and Old Amarillo. Oh, brother. Hector, does anybody in this town really think Effie's got what it takes to write for Hollywood? Well, frankly, ain't anybody really think so outside of that professor. The professor? A uh, young music writing fellow settled here from New York a couple of years ago. Started doing pretty good, too. After he advertised in the Centerville Bugle for folks who wanted to make big money with their song poems. Oh, and for 50 or 100 bucks, he promised to write the music that would make the song poems commercial? Yeah. Claimed he had big contacts with the publishers? Yeah. Abby had lots of songs put music to by the professor. Gave every dime she made to that fellow. Oh, the poor kid. He's just the type that's a pushover for such a phony. Phony? Sure. Legitimate outfits don't make promises they can't possibly keep. Hector, yeah. we got to do something to keep poor Effie from running off to Hollywood and finding out about the song writing racket the hard way. Oh. And I got just ten minutes to do it. Nine minutes. I'm going into your office, Hector, and have a talk with her. It won't be easy to change your mind about her gift, as she calls it. Effie sure sets a lot of store by Jeff Brady's opinion of her song poems. Jeff Brady? That's the professor. Doing real good, too. Got an office and a snazzy yellow convertible. Late 36 model, too. With a foxtail on the radiator cap and little black eyes that practically whistle at you? That's the skunk Maisie. You know him? <sighs> like a book, Hector. Like a book. Jeff Brady is the professor, huh? Uh... Sometimes it takes me all day to think. That's better. Hector, where's Brady's office? There's two blocks down on Hill Street. Can't miss it. That yellow chicken wagon of his is always parked in front. Ah, now Hector, listen. Effie has to find out Brady's been taking her for a ride. Yeah, so? So I'm going for a ride. You? What about Effie? She's going for one, too, in the rumble seat. The rumble seat? Of Brady's car. With the lid down so she can hear, but not be seen. You feeling all right, Maisie? Well, don't try to understand what I'm doing, Hector. I'm not sure I know myself. Just get Effie in Brady's rumble seat and keep her quiet. Both of us? In the rumble seat? Mm, with the lid down. Now, how do I get her in there without explaining? Well, that's up to you. That's what I thought. Well, uh, where will you be, Maisie? In the front seat with Brady. If that light in his eye means what I think it means. <laughs> See you later, Hector. Well, folks, she's back. <laughs> Come on, climb aboard for last night, Gail. Oh, uh, I'm not going with you, driver. I'm going with Jeff Brady. <laughs> I have a little work to do, so if you don't mind following me down to Lover's Lane. Now, wait. Who, who in tarnation is Jeff Brady? What do you mean, follow you down to Lover's Lane? And also... There's no time to explain, but it's for Effie. It won't take but maybe an hour or so. No, so long, lady. If I never see you again, I thank you. Well, bye, 2863, and thanks. Anyway, I guess I'm just a soft-hearted person. Oh, and if you should change your mind, Jeff's car is a yellow convertible with a foxtail on the radiator cap. Bye now, and wish me luck. I got a feeling I'm going to need it. Tall, dark, and challenging. Yeah, you. <laughs> you can come out from behind the piano, Jeffy. The knives ain't very sharp. Uh, maybe not, lady, but I happen to bleed easy. <laughs> now go away, please. I'm busy. Too busy to show a girl the way to the bus station? The long, penis way? Uh, look, I'm really very busy. Oh. <laughs> you mean it? Uh, well, usually I walk back from an auto ride, but... This is the first time I've ever walked back to get one. I don't get it, gorgeous. Just this morning, you looked daggers at me. you a whole suitcase full of them. Oh, you just give up too easy, Jeffy. I was going to go out of town, but I missed the bus. <laughs> yeah, so I decided it was no use to also miss the boat, if you know what I mean. Oh, I think I do, yeah. Well, uh, shall we go, beautiful? Oh, hop in, darling. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Jeffy, when we get out to uh, this 
romantic spot, I'm expecting you to act like a gentleman. Mm. <laughs> you do. <laughs> yes. Aren't I being silly? Oh, but, uh, 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 well, here, I'll, I'll put your suitcase in the rumble seat, Oh, huh? no, don't put it in there. Effie is... Effie? Uh, every time I leave my suitcase in a rumble seat, I forget it. <laughs> uh, just leave it in front with me by the door. That's better. Yeah, yeah, where it won't get in the way, huh? Yeah. Well, here we go. You comfy, baby? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I'm not crowding you too much, am I? Oh, not nearly enough, sugar. Not nearly enough. <laughs> oh! What was that? What was what? Well, I thought I heard voices coming from inside my... my... Oh, that. That was just my conscience talking to my better self. <laughs> silly, isn't it? What's well, silly? I have no better self. Well, are you ready, Jeffy? Little Jeffy's always ready. <laughs> Well, baby, this is it. Sort of like a dream world, isn't it? Uh huh. It's positively yummy. Yeah. And here we are. Yep, just the four of us. Four of us? Uh, you and me, two and us make. <laughs> <laughs> you know, baby, you're corny, mm. but you're cute. Mr. Brady. Oh, come on, let's just be nice. Give us a kiss, huh? A kiss? Why, Jeffy, I don't even know who you are. Of course, I know what you are. But what do you do? Oh, now, what difference does that make, baby? Oh, come on, now, be nice. It and... said on the door that you're a songwriter. Now, there couldn't be any real money in that racket in this time. Oh, there is, baby. When you got dopes like Effie Bascom on your sucker list, you... you... I'm sure I just heard something in the rumble seat. I'm going to go out... And leave baby without her great big lover ball. Oh. Well, are you really warming up? <laughs> Come on, slip us those lips. Oh, huh? yes, darling. Before I... I mean, we... That is... Before. I'd like to ask you one very important question. Sure, honey. What is it? What's a sucker, Lou? Oh, for God's sake, that ain't important. Now, come on with that kiss. I ain't got all day. No telly, no smoochie, Jesse. Yeah. Well, it's okay. It's, it's a racket I've got. Is it? This town is full of stupid jerks who pay me to write music for their corny lyrics. I rave about the tripe they turn out, promise some publication, and that the stuff will be sung by big stars. Now, you satisfied? Come on, give me a kiss. Very satisfied. Oh, thank goodness. Now, come on, honey. Jeffy Weffy wants a kiss. <coughs> And you're going to get one, too. You sunk. Oh! Effie, you shouldn't have knocked him out with a jack. Yeah, I wanted to do it, but Effie talked me out of it. The lady first, you know. Oh, May. Oh. I've been such a fool to even have Oh, I'm it. sorry you had to find out about your song for me this way, Effie. I hope you'll forgive me. Forgive? I'll never forget you, Nancy. Never. I never even want to hear the word Hollywood again. Oh, no, you get over it, Ed. Oh. Work will make you forget. <laughs> and from what I hear about your boss, he's the lad that can dish it out. You ain't kidding, Mincy. But say, you got a job that's got to be took care of, too. In Millvale, remember? Mm -hmm. Fly it over, Mincy, and I'll drive you over in this here skunk's car. Oh, well, that won't be necessary, heck. <laughs> I kind of thought you wouldn't let me down. Well, don't don't kid yourself, miss. It uh, just happens to be on my route. On your route? Hey, there ain't never been a bus on this road. Okay, so I'm a trailblazer. <laughs> Go on, get in, miss. Somewhat of a hurry. Sure, sure. Well, bye again, Hector. Take care of yourself, Effie. Lots of luck, Maisie. Bless you, Maisie. Oh, bless you. Oh, come on, will you, lady? I'm two hours late on my run already. But I'm coming. Yeah, I'm going to have to drive like blazes to get to Middletown before night. Yeah, I guess you will. Um, mi Middletown? Yeah, it's almost a hundred miles. Oh. No. No. It can't be. Uh-huh. This is the wrong bus. I'm going to Millvale. Oh, I'm sorry if I've inconvenienced you, driver. Inconvenienced me? Inconvenienced me. Ah! 
In just a moment, we will return to The Adventures of Maisie. On my way to Millvale. Maybe I'll get that job tanning fish. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll like it. Maybe I won't. It probably ain't easy sticking fish in a can with one hand and holding your nose with the other. But maybe I'll run into nice people like Effie Hector and that bus driver in Millvale. It may be a small town, but it ain't the number of square miles in a place that makes it a nice town. It's the number of square people. Well, come on, little black suitcase. You can't wait for tomorrow for that next bus. Gosh, I wish my feet were hydromatic so I wouldn't have to shift them. You've just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. Maisie is presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of East Side, West Side, starring Barbara Stanwyck, James Mason, Van Heflin, and Ava Gardner. Sheldon Leonard was heard as the driver and Effie was played by Lorene Tuttle. This program was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. <laughs> <laughs>